while I pet this for a minute, I'll just tell you, I really love it. Like, I don't want to feel like I'm joking. Ooh, how high can I stack the yarn cakes? Because I've been bent over for three hours, which is really sad. Anyway, doesn't matter. I will pretty much always be a 12 year old girl. Just don't rob a bank. Hello, and welcome to the Young Folk Knits Podcast. This is episode 22. Welcome to the Young Folk Knits podcast. My name is Casey and I'm the maker here at Young Folk Knits. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me again. If you are a new viewer, then you are very welcome. This is a podcast mainly about knitting. I do also chat about sewing, sometimes crochet, and randomly all other crafts at one point or another. <laughs> I live on a small farm in Arkansas with my family where we raise honeybees and chickens and gardens and we live in the foothills of the Ozarks. I'm excited to get to sit down and chat with y'all about knitting and projects and yarn because it seems like the last few episodes have been a little bit out of the normal for me. On the last episode, my husband Brandon joined me and we had so much fun talking about what it's like being married to a knitter and we played the newlyweds game, even though we've been married for 14 years, which was a lot of fun. Thank y'all all so much for all the comments and the love on that video. I really appreciated it. Everyone said he was such a good sport and he really was. He is my best friend and I absolutely adore that man. But today I do have a lot to talk about. I was on vacation for a week and I've got a little behind in my podcasting. So let's just get started talking about yarn. I do have a finished object to share with y'all. So let's start with that. Inclinations 
cowl and I am so excited. This has been quite the journey because first of all, I don't work on one project at a time. I usually have quite a few going. Second of all, it's half fisherman's rib on US 2 needles and it takes a minute to knit. So this is a pattern by Andrea Mowry and it is the cow version. She also has an inclination shawl, which is of course bigger, but this took plenty long enough. So I'm glad I went with the cowl. I do live in Arkansas, so I thought that a cowl might get a little bit more wear since it doesn't get quite that cold. And I thought this might be a little bit more of a workhorse piece since I could just throw it on and wear it easily, you know, under a coat or with long sleeves. It is knit in half fisherman's rib. So I knit the Strya cardigan, which is another pattern by Andrea Mowry, and it is exactly the same US 2 needles. This yarn is spin cycles dyed in the wool, but actually this is their nocturne base, which is the same as dyed in the wool, except it's a gray undertone. So the colors die up a little bit moodier and a little bit darker. I use the colors flashback and brown sugar. So I've got this really cool grungy rainbow is <laughs> basically what it turned into. So you knit this in a weird triangle shape <laughs> and then you seam it together at the back. This is the back. I felt like this dry cardigan took forever, although I did enjoy it. It is at least knit flat. Half Fisherman's rib is so much easier knit flat. Then once you get to the sleeves on the Strya cardigan, you're knitting in the round. And that is whenever I really aggravated my carpal tunnel. That was pretty much the first time I had ever had an issue with it. Both wrists were so bad. I had to wear braces all the time. I would wake up at night. My hands were totally numb. Um, it just really aggravated my wrist and caused a lot of pain. And I think it was because I knit it on nine inch circulars and I was really hitting it hard because I was doing it as part of a knit along and I really wanted to finish on time. And I think that's what caused it. This at least is knit flat the whole way. So that makes a huge difference. In Half Fisherman's Rib on the right side, you are knitting one below and then you purl. Then you knit one into the stitch below and then you purl. You do that all the way across. On the other side though, on the wrong side, all you have to do is just knit straight across. So that's really nice. It's like a relief row. A relief row. Hmm. My tongue was not cooperating. So when you knit it in the round though, like you do on the birch pullover, is it birch pullover or birch sweater, which I really want to make. It's another sweater by Andrea Mowry, but it is totally knit in the round and <laughs> you don't get that relief row. It's purl and then knit one below purl one. And I'm not really sure that my hands can handle that. I need to look at the pattern again to make sure. But yeah, it's so pretty. It looks like something I would wear all the time. And I love all of the versions that I've been seeing on Instagram. I've wanted to make it ever since it was released, but oof, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I think it would take me a year to make. Anyway, this is done. I love it. And I, I think it's gonna be worn a lot. It's this really odd shape, you know, it's very long. <sighs> But here, let me try it on. So I'm 5'8", and I have, you know, fairly broad shoulders that go with being somebody that's 5'8". <laughs> and I feel like I could have even knit it a little bit wider maybe. I think Andrea Mowry is much more petite than I am and in pictures of her, it looks a little bit bigger than it does on me. I did block it to the dimensions that she called for in the pattern. I measured it, pinned it in place, so I know for sure it's the size it's supposed to be. But on me, it's a little bit, I mean, it's fine. I think it's really nice. It just definitely looks bigger on her. <laughs> than it does on me. 
if that makes sense. I don't know. I still really like it and I'm going to wear it all the time. I like that it's not too big. I mean, it definitely looks like the size of a cowl. But instead of it being as so long, like I could have stood for it to be a little bit shorter this way, but bigger this way. Yeah. Anyway, I do really love it and I, it's not itchy at all. I really like Spin Cycle. I love the feeling of non-superwash wool. I've said this before, but I'll say it again. With Spin Cycle, I 100% spit splice. I think it's a two-ply yarn <laughs> and I will um, separate the two plies I'll cut one off and I'll do the same to my new piece that I'm joining I will cut one off and then I'll spit splice it together and it just has a really nice join I love working with wool it's so easy on my hands so of course I love the fact that spin cycle is non superwash wool <laughs> I think it's gonna be really nice this fall and winter. And it's not too tight on my neck. I don't wanna feel like I'm joking. Um, and it's, I mean, you could totally lift it up. <laughs> just don't rob a bank. While I pet this for a minute, I'll just tell you, I really love it. <laughs> So something else that I made this week, you may see that I'm wearing, is some friendship bracelets. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen these. I will pretty much always be a 12 year old girl that likes to make friendship bracelets and necklaces and all that stuff. But these are so fun and easy and quick. It's almost like you're doing a fishtail braid on these. You just use a leather cord. I actually like the leather a lot of times that's a little bit thinner than this, maybe like a one millimeter, two millimeter leather cord. This is a little bit thick, but it's the only thing I had on hand and I didn't want to buy anything. So I just used, um, I just use this and it's kind of fun, but I, I probably would wear it by itself because of how big it is. I mean, scoot up. So you use a leather cord and embroidery thread and that's the only two things you need to make it. I like to use a wooden box to actually make it on because you can secure it onto the box and then have something to put your fingers down into. It's not in the way. And then there's so many different color combinations you can do. I love stripes. This one I made specifically to match my half and half triangles wrap, which I'm using this linen quill yarn from Pearl Soho, and I'll show you more about that in a minute. But isn't that cute together? So I love these bracelets. I think they're fun. You can shower, swim with them. They're pretty durable. Also, there's so many tutorials on YouTube. Just look up friendship bracelet tutorial and there's all different patterns and different kinds. I did put a reel on Instagram that kind of showed how I did it, although it's not really much of a tutorial, but you can see the way I make them if you watch that on Instagram. So now that we've established I love my inclinations, Cal, let's move into whips. Oh, Susanna. Don't cry for me We had some good years So let me be The world goes on I sang my song I Gave my own true love For you to see Oh Susanna Don't you cry Hold the tears back and dry your eyes What's this life without a sweet goodbye? Son of 
America A Pennsylvania child They say the day I was born Was the fourth day of July My mother's love and my father's pride before. It is my Zosia Wrap Cardigan and this is a pattern I'm testing for Alex from Varen Rose. She's a brilliant designer. I love all of her patterns. This is a wrap cardigan. Let me put, since kind of squished on my needles, let me put a picture up of what it's going to look like when it's finished. But this is a wrap cardigan that is pretty much all over lace work. The back is not lace, but that's it. Just that one panel. <laughs> Everything else, the front, the sleeves, and the tie is all this beautiful lace pattern. I have one sleeve done and my other sleeve is almost finished. And then I still need to do the wrap. I'm sorry, the tie. So I had started the tie and I had got to the point where I was connecting it to the body. So what you do is you work one section of the tie, then you continue working and attach it to the body as you go. And then you'll work the other section of the tie, which is going to wrap around you, come back and tie with <laughs> the first part. So it's a big project, especially that part, the, the tie part, but it's totally worth it. it it's absolutely beautiful. I already love the way it fits. Alex took some pictures of herself wearing it and it just reinvigorated me <laughs> to want to finish it. She looks beautiful in it. I think it's going to be so fun over dresses. I would absolutely love to wear this with a white t-shirt, jeans, and a fedora this fall. I think that would be really fun. It's so soft. So the yarn I'm using is Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk. And it is this lovely neutral brown color. I really like it. It's not really warm or cool, I don't think. It's just really neutral. So I, I like this color a lot. I think it's going to go with everything. And the Drops Alpaca Silk is heavenly. <laughs> I cannot do mohair. I'm allergic to it. Sorry, I do use a lot, but honestly, it still bothers me a little bit. This doesn't bother me at all. It is so nice. It's um, air and weight, I think, which I'm not sure about, but it is very fluffy. And I got mine from a Ravelry D stash, which turned out amazing. But everybody I've been talking to has ordered theirs from Wool Warehouse. 
and shipping is great. It's super fast, super reliable, and their prices are amazing. In fact, Rebecca from the Cravea podcast, <laughs> she knows I love this yarn, so she's like constantly telling me when it's on sale or when somebody's de-stashing it, and I love it. I'm like, send me all the links. <laughs> this is on sale at Wool Warehouse. Hopefully this is gonna go live Friday. I'm recording this a little bit earlier, so I'm not sure if it will still be on sale. It is whenever I'm recording this though. So I will link Wool Warehouse and the Brushed Alpaca Silk in the description box below. The pattern is a little bit more advanced because you have a lot going on at once. You know, you're increasing, you're shaping, you're doing lace work, but I also think that keeps it extremely engaging. So I love lace. Lace is one of my absolute favorite things to knit. And so I have loved this project. And it has some really nice stretch to it as well. So I can't wait to show y'all my finished piece. So from what I understand, the pattern is going to be released next Thursday, which is August the 24th. Very exciting. And hopefully I'll be done by then. <laughs> I am trying really hard to finish this. Unfortunately, I went on vacation for a week that put me, well, it's not unfortunate that I went on vacation. It was very nice to be on vacation, <laughs> but unfortunately I am behind on finishing the pattern. Anyway, doesn't matter. So Alex from Bear and Rose has very kindly offered to give one of y'all a copy of this pattern, the Zosia Wrap Cardigan when it releases next week. So to win this giveaway, I think all you need to do is subscribe to my channel and then comment on this video what color you would make this in. I think that it is just stunning in so many different colors. There's already some testers that have finished, so you can look at that hashtag on Instagram. It's the Zosia Wrap Cardigan. You can find Alex on Instagram under Baron Rose. Her patterns are available to buy on Ravelry and on Etsy. So I will link both of those in the description box below. And as I said, this will be released August the 24th, 2022. So I'm very excited for this pattern to come out. On the next episode I record when I have actually finished this cardigan fully, I will talk a little bit more about tips and tricks for the pattern or different things I found while working it. In the meantime, y'all comment below so you can have a chance to win this pattern. Thank you so much, Alex. You are so sweet. If y'all aren't following her on Instagram, you really should because she has some amazing new designs that she's working on. She is somebody that you're gonna wanna follow closely. She just has one great design after another. <laughs> so definitely wanna follow her on Instagram. So this past week, I really didn't get to knit at all while I was gone. And I'm mainly going to be focusing on my Zosia Wrap Cardigan until I finish that because it needs to be done by my test deadline. But I had talked a little bit before about my Easy V sweater and I didn't have the project bag with me on the last episode. So I just wanted to go ahead and show y'all the baby collar that I have done. I have made no progress on whatsoever. So I had started this, I had gotten all the way done with the ribbing on the collar and realized that I had done it completely wrong. I am so bad about quickly scanning a pattern and thinking I know exactly what I'm doing and not really reading it. And that was a mistake <laughs> because I was only increasing at the front and the back and I was not increasing at the sides here. So you're, so you're increasing at these different places to give you your shaping. And you've got your shoulder or arm stitches right here that are gonna be for your sleeves. And you're not increasing in those spots, but you're increasing in these other spots around it and at the front and the back. And it starts shaping this really cool V sweater. So this is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter from Boyland Knitworks. And it uses worsted weight yarn. And this is another spin cycle project. So I'm using the spin cycle colors that she used in her original sweater, uh, which is Lolo, 
Stay Ready and Cast Away, I believe are the three names. And I, I do color manage my spin cycle a little bit. And I love to wind them up into cakes for that reason because you can see the color shifting and where it's at and what colors are coming up and where the colors are that you might want instead. Whereas if you wind it up into a ball, which I do have some spin cycle wound into a ball, you just can't see that. So it's much harder to color manage <laughs> or to get to where you want to be with the yarn. I am now back on track with this pattern. I absolutely love the pattern. I love knitting it. I feel like I haven't worked with worsted yarn in a long time and it's just nice. And it's this super squishy, I think this is Rambouillet. It's a worsted non-superwash wool and it feels amazing. So I'm trying to figure out how much ease that I want to make mine with. I'm hoping that I've made the right choice. I'm making the size five. Victoria from Victorious Wool and Jelena um, on Instagram, her name is Jelena Sue. They're making this as well. And I'm watching their projects to see how much ease they've gotten, how it's fitting. And I'm hoping that I made the right choice. I'm going with it for now, but yes, I do absolutely love the colors. Let me see. I think you start with this one. And then, let's see. I feel like I'm playing Jenga. Oh, how high can I stack the yarn cakes? Not very. Not very. Anyway, zero progress on that, but I did want to at least show you it's a real thing. The other thing I have been working on, like literally one row at a time, is my Pearl Soho half and half triangles wrap, which is in the middle of a row right now. I have made so little progress. It is on US 3 needles, so it doesn't progress that quickly and the rows are about half a mile long so there is that but it is so nice to just have a stockinette project to be able to pick it up and not have to look at a pattern not have to wonder where I'm at or what I was doing and I love this linen quill it's it's amazing it's the first time I've used it and I absolutely love it I know that some colors are more rustic than others this is the peony pink and it is not rustic at all in my opinion um if you put it around your neck you feel a little bit of those stray linen fibers but otherwise I you know I absolutely love this so oh yes I think this is gonna be really awesome together I'll have to wear my bracelets with my half and half wrap. I think that's all the whips I'm going to show because I haven't made progress on anything else. I just have not had time to knit. The next episode, hopefully I will have a lot of progress on multiple things <laughs> I can share about. So I do want to show you a little bit of some acquisitions and some knitting plans that I have. <music> to show you this sweetest package that I got in the mail. An incredibly sweet viewer named Marie, who lives in Sweden, sent me a package, a curated package of yarn, which first of all, I adore these colors. Aren't they amazing? So she actually dyed this color herself, but she also has a YouTube channel called The Inquisitive Knitter. But she sent me these Swedish yarns and she also sent me the pattern 
for the Fields of Brioche shawl, which I have been eyeing. I absolutely love it. I'm so excited to have the pattern and I am definitely going to make it. And I think these colors would be so pretty together. So thank you so much, Marie. So very sweet and kind of you. I am very, I am very much looking forward to making this shawl and to be using some Swedish yarn. This feels very special. I'm very excited. All right, let's knit and chat for a bit. I'm going to work on my half and half triangles wrap, and I think I'll answer a question or two that y'all have asked me. question and then if we still have time then one non-knitting related question I got. Even though I, I have chatted a little bit about this previously, 
was about yarn selection and color. So the question I've gotten quite a few times is how important is color in your yarn selection and would you purchase yarn if it is the right texture, weight, fiber, but maybe the color is not just right. <laughs> I have touched on this in a previous episode, but I will just say this again. For me, color is everything. <laughs> I mean, everything. So if the yarn is perfect as far as the actual fiber and yarn itself, but it's not the color that I like, then I'm probably not going to knit with it. I love color. I absolutely love color. So yeah, the color is very important to me. In fact, I'm probably more likely to use a yarn that's not perfect for a pattern if the color is perfect, and then at that point, try to make the yarn fit the pattern by adjusting needle size to get gauge, maybe adjusting the pattern a little bit <laughs> to work for the yarn. Now drape is important as well. So if the yarn is the perfect color, but it's gonna stand straight up on my body in a type of pattern that absolutely would be unflattering, then yeah, I'm not gonna use it. But if it's a perfect yarn, but not the right color, I still probably won't use it. You know, I think there's different kinds of knitters and I love that just like everybody's different. And I don't think that one is better than the other. I think that both are needed. I think that there are some very technical minded knitters. And I think that those people make amazing pattern riders. I absolutely love to knit a pattern <laughs> that has been written by someone who is amazing at math, very technically minded, able to write a pattern down in a way that is succinct yet has all the detail it needs and leads you exactly as you need to go from step to step. Very easy to follow. In my opinion, just hands down write the best patterns. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I also think that those same type of knitters are very good at sitting down and logically picking their patterns. What pattern am I going to knit that I will wear? What pattern is the best fit for my body type? You know, what pattern is the best fit for the area I live in? I also think that they are more of a finished project knitter most of the time. They make sure that the piece that they're knitting is going to be, you know, perfect dimensions. And what they're knitting for is that finished garment. And so that's different than me. <laughs> and I'm not saying that it's a bad thing that I'm the way that I am. I'm just different. I think that people usually fall into one or the other of these camps. I am a process knitter. I like to knit something because I'm enjoying knitting it. I like to knit something because I like looking at it while I'm knitting it. The color is very important to me. I might knit something and it not be because I think it's going to be a staple in my wardrobe. I just knit it because it's like a piece of art and I enjoyed the process of it and I like looking at it whenever it's finished. Not always the most practical of knitters but I feel like it is my creative outlet. And so function isn't always the priority for me. And I think that color being so important to me is just another factor in that same mindset that I have, whereas it's like wearable art. So the way it looks is really important to me and functionality is lower on the list. So that means I'm not the best at organizing and planning out my knits and my future knits and what does my closet need? What do I not need? It's more what I feel in the moment. When I'm done knitting something, I'm ready to cast on something else. What am I feeling like I want to knit in that moment? Because this is something that I'm doing as a creative outlet that I just do because I love it. I'm not a pattern designer. That's not what I do for a living. So I don't have to worry so much about functionality and different things like that. And I think that does make a difference. But I'm interested, which camp are you in? And I don't think that one is better than the other. I think that both are important. Sometimes I wish I could be more technically minded and be more of a functional knitter. There's always hope for the future. 
So non-knitting question, something I have also been asked multiple times, which kind of makes me chuckle, is about my hair. I've been asked quite a few times on hair care tips or growing out your hair or what I do. So first of all, I'll just say I need a haircut. I need one bad and I cut my hair during COVID and it was interesting, but it worked, you know, it worked, but it was interesting. And now I need to cut it again. I tried to trim my ends by myself the other day and I don't even know what happened, but I think I'm gonna have to go in and get it cut. It's just, I think, I think it would be easier if it wasn't so long, but it's so long that I can't even reach it at the bottom. And it's getting a little out of hand. Becky, the next time you come over, you're gonna cut my hair. <laughs> Only tips that I have is that I do not use heat on my hair. I don't ever use a curling iron. I never use a straightener. And as far as blow dryers go, I only diffuse it. And that's only sometimes because honestly, I just don't have the time. It takes me like three hours to diffuse my hair. <laughs> and then it's probably still not dry. And then I can't stand up for a week because I've been bent over for three hours. I do kind of follow like this modified version of the curly girl method. If you've heard of that before, then you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, look it up on YouTube and you'll fall down a rabbit hole that you wish you had never started down. But there's some things in it that I think would just apply to healthy hair care for anybody. So I don't use shampoo or conditioner that has sulfates, parabens, or silicones for the most part. I don't have like kinky coily hair. Um, it's wavy, so I do have to use a shampoo with some sulfates in it, like once every two weeks, once a month, just to help keep it cleaning from getting too heavy with product on it. Getting a little personal here, I only wash my hair twice a week. I wash my hair every Tuesday and every Friday, usually. And those days, I will wear it down. So sometimes what I'll just do is scrunch it and put some gel in it and then the rest of the time it's usually in a in braids because i'm outside i'm cooking i'm cleaning i'm homeschooling my kids i'm knitting and i just want it out of my face and off of me that's why i basically knit with human hair constantly it is knitted into every project i've ever made but doing those things usually keeps it pretty healthy. There's another rabbit hole that you can fall down that talks all about protein moisture balance. <laughs> and my hair definitely likes protein. So I buy this little bottle on Amazon of protein. And whenever I have shampooed my hair and then I'm ready to put some conditioner in it, I will put a few drops of that in my conditioner, in my hand, and uh, you know, put it into my hair. My hair seems to really like the protein. Hair, also because my hair's wavy, curly, it just tangles constantly. So the only time I feel like I can brush my hair is in the shower when my hair's wet and covered in conditioner. <laughs> it's the only time that a brush wants to go through it. So then if I dry brush my hair later, I literally look like Mufasa or a poodle. So I don't tend to dry brush my hair very often. But I think if you're wanting to grow your hair out, you know, avoiding heat is so important because heat will damage your hair, it's gonna break. So also I don't color my hair. I have before, but it's been years since I've done that. So yeah, if you have curly hair and you are interested in wearing it curly, you can always search for the curly girl method. I will say this, I don't follow that strictly. The only thing that I follow strictly is that I don't use heat on my hair except to diffuse it. The other thing that I follow pretty strictly is that I never use silicones in my hair. Yeah, sorry if that was the most boring question I have ever answered. <laughs> as far as what I'm reading and watching, I am currently listening to an audiobook by Agatha Christie. It was originally a play, so it was adapted as a book, but it all happens in one room, which I always think is so clever how that can be so interesting. But it is called The Spider's Web. And I'm not that far into it, but so far so good. It's about a young wife 
who's married to a British diplomat, someone who works in the government. So of course there's the big stately home, weekend house party, young stepdaughter, and a body. So it's pretty interesting. I have also been reading Anne of Green Gables. I love those books and I have gone back and I've been reading all of the series again just because something so comforting about it. I just love that series and I absolutely love the older series that came on television back in the late 80s, early 90s. Anyway, I have on DVD Anne of Green Gables, Anne of Avonlea, and the continuing story. And I think that one is just the best. It's my favorite. I love it. I think Gilbert's just the cutest in that one. And I love Anne in this one too. Anyway, I grew up watching those and I absolutely love them. So glad I still have those on DVD. I had them on VHS forever, but my VHS player <laughs> broke. I don't think you can stream them anywhere, which is really sad. So I had talked in a previous episode about the book Magpie, Mar Magpie Murders, but I didn't really like it. I didn't finish it. I wouldn't really recommend it. I'm thinking about listening to the book The Wedding Guest by Lucy Foley. Is that the right name? I'll put it on the screen. But that looks interesting. So I might try that out after I finish The Spider's Web. If you have any good book suggestions, let me know in the comments. I do have some sewing that I didn't get a chance to show y'all this episode, but I will show you in the next episode. I am very excited to show you my Studio Tunic by Sew Liberated, which the pockets on are the best. I love it. And then you may remember if you've watched this podcast before, that I am in the process of making a quilt and I'm at the point of the hand quilting part. <laughs> And it kind of got put up and I haven't made much progress on it, but I was watching Bethany from Well Loved Knit and she's working on a extremely cute quilt for her soon to be born baby. And it made me think about my quilts and think I really need to work on it. So I've got that back out and I'm continuing on with the hand stitching, but it is a labor of love and it is going to be a long haul project. But I think as it gets colder and it's not so oppressive to have a full quilt in my lap that it will be easier to spend more time working on it. So I'm going to show you all my progress on that on the next episode, hopefully. But thank y'all so much for hanging out with me today. And don't forget to enter the giveaway. Just make sure and comment below what color you would knit your Zosia wrap cardigan in. I hope y'all have a wonderful weekend and I will talk with you soon. Bye. Happy knitting. Bye.